What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial we're going to be talking about railing extensions. Now railing, uh, railings are one of those Revit elements that are notoriously tedious to work with and if you don't know the exact place where to set something up or to change something you won't be able to complete your action and in this case we're going to be covering the topic of railing extensions. But before I get into that I would just like to ask you to like this tutorial, it helps me out a lot and if you haven't already I suggest you subscribe because I make useful Revit tutorials each week. Also, if you're looking into some advanced Revit courses that are over one hour long, I suggest you check out my Patreon, first link in the description. There I've got multiple advanced Revit courses, 17 so far, and they're all over one hour long. Also, if you want to get my project files, this file that I'm going to be creating right now, or any of my other Revit project files, over 300 so far, check out my Patreon, first link in the description. Okay, now let's get into the tutorial. So as you can see over here, I'm in Revit and I'm just going to be using the regular architectural template for this project. And now as soon as Revit loads, I'm just going to make a small adjustments to the units. So just type in UN to get your uh, units dialog and let's change the length to centimeters. I just prefer working in centimeters and let's click OK. OK, so once we're here, now we can start playing around with railings. So this will be railings for stairs specifically. So I'm just going to go here with stairs and I'm going to go with the monolithic stair type and let's just create one staircase going from level one to level two. Now this being a basic project template, it's going to be four meters high and that's pretty much okay for what we're doing. Now I'm just going to go to 3D and let's orbit around a little bit and there we go, this is our staircase. Now the stair type is this, or the railing type is the 900 millimeter pipe. It might be something else in your case, so I just suggest you set it to the 900 millimeter pipe. Now, if you want to do any type of extension over here, as you can see, this is just going to stop at the bottom of your staircase and it's going to just stop there. It's not going any further. So if you want to adjust your railing, you can do a couple of options. So you can either select it and then go into edit path and then you can actually add a little bit of distance over here hit finish and you're going to get something that looks like this. But as you can see, that basically extends the whole railing. But let's say you just want to extend the top rail and to have maybe something that's going to help out when grabbing this handrail. So I'm just going to go one step backward or and maybe cancel out of this, discard the changes and let's go back to this. Okay, in order to change the top rail, I'm not going to make any changes to the existing top rail. So if I go here into edit type, here we have the top rail and the type is for 40 millimeter circular. Now I don't want to change this existing family. So I'm going to cre be creating a new family and then modifying that new family. So for that, I'm just going to cancel out of this dialog and to find that uh, certain uh, top rail family, what you can do is you can go here into your project browser, scroll all the way down and find families, expand that menu, scroll down and let's search for railing families. Okay, here we have the railings category, expand that menu and here we have the top rail type and expand that menu and here we have our circular 40 millimeter. Now I can just select it, right click, go to duplicate and here we have another type. Now I can right click over here, go into rename and let's rename it number two, instead of number two, let's call it extension. Okay, so we have our extension railing type and you can edit it either, either over here or back in the railing menu. So if you want to edit it over here, you just double click on this thing and here you have the type properties for that top rail. Or alternatively, what you can do is you can select the whole railing, go into edit type, find your top rail, change it to uh, basically this 40 millimeter extension and now you can make your changes over here. So those are basically the two ways you can get to that menu. In this case, I'm just going to stay here because it's maybe a bit more intuitive to go through the railing to find your uh, top type. So you can change the material here if that's something that you want to do. But the important part that we're going to be playing around in this tutorial is the extension. So here, as you can see, you've got your extension style. And maybe if we hover for a while, as you can see, you have multiple extension styles. So the one that we're going to be uh, 
playing around with for now is maybe the floor or the post. So if I go maybe and set it to post and then maybe give it a bit of length. So let's go with 30 centimeters, hit OK, apply, OK again. And as you can see, it's got this little extension. So let me maybe move the stair out of the way over here, go into edit type, go here into that extension. Let's see, so this is currently at set at post, or and here you can also do plus thread depth. So what does that mean? So if you check this, hit apply, it's going to extend it just like this. So it extended the uh, basically the top rail uh, at an angle by the value of one more step. So that's maybe something that's uh, according to code in your country or in your area. So if you if that's what code requires, then you can add that one plus one thread depth over here. Also here you can change the length. And as you can see, the length is from here to here. So if you change it to 20, hit apply as you can see now it's shorter also you can change maybe you don't want to post you want the floor hit apply and as you can see now it's going all the way to the floor it's not going to this post it's going down to the floor and if you maybe want to add some elements here on the floor just some construction elements to hold it down to the floor to attach it to the floor here uh, you have your uh, terminations and you can add basically some maybe wood uh, Part over here that's going to add like a structural, I, I, like another structural element over there. Also here uh, we can change it to uh, wall. Now wall only works if this is next to a wall and it will ha it would have to be a displaced uh, top rail. So I'm not going to go into that too much. But let's go and set it back to post. Hit apply and just make sure when you set it back to post that you uncheck this uh, little termination just because it's it doesn't look natural that you would have that structural element when it's connected to the post. It should probably look natural like this. Okay, there you go. So it's now set to post and let's extend it a bit more. Let's go to 30 centimeters, hit enter, hit apply, and there we go. So now it's extended at 30 centimeters, but let's say you're not really happy with this thing. So maybe it doesn't work the way you want it to work and you want to, well, maybe make some adjustments. So what you can do is you can just go here, hit OK, apply, OK, and you can actually edit this top rail. Now, when you go to edit the top rail, you need to select first the top rail, because if you go, go here and just select the railing and go into and here for the modify tools, you only have edit path. But if I hover over the railing, hit tab once, I can select the rail and then I can go here to edit rail. And then here I can actually edit the profile in which this works. Now, usually in Revit, you you know that when you're in a sketch mode, just like this, it's uh, usually those pink lines here, it's blue lines, and they work a bit different, and they're a bit tedious to work with, but uh, if you take your time, it can look all right. So maybe I'm just going to go like this with an arc, and let's say I do an arc like this, and then what I can do is maybe delete this part, delete this part, and extend this part back, and hit finish, finish again, and there you go. So we've changed our extension and it looks a bit different. Now, you may notice that this is only going to be for the exact uh, railing that we've edited. So it changed this rail, but it's not automatically going to change this rail, it's an instance change it's not a type change so if you want to make the same change on the other rail you would have to go into uh, basically you have to select the, the top rail then go into edit rail and then here you would uh, well you would have to go again into edit path and then you can make some change let's make it a bit different over here maybe we can go again with an arc but let's go maybe like this so it's just going to be an arc over here on top and then we can select these and kind of resize them. Now uh, for some reason this works uh, really bad, it's really tedious to work with, it's not as intuitive as regular sketch mode in Revit so keep that in mind when working uh, because it's going to be a bit uh, 
a bit hard to play around. For example, if I want to use the fillet tool, for some reason it doesn't want to work on these lines. So just keep that in mind and uh, it's going to be a bit harder than your regular sketch mode when you're working with floor plans or something like that. But other than that, it's uh, it can work all right. So there you go. That's how you create these custom extensions for your uh, staircase railing. So that concludes this uh, quick tutorial on this topic. I hope you have learned something new. Again, as I said, if you want maybe a more advanced tutorial on stairs and railings, check out my Patreon there. I already have a course on that that's one hour long and also multiple co courses as well as all of my Revit project files. So if that's something you're interesting, interested in, first a link in the description. Okay, so that concludes this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for any future tutorials, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.